morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. As you can see, I'm not Martin Dayholz, believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, okay. April the 14th, it has Praise Kids and Junior United Methodist Youth and Senior Methodist Youth meet that evening. Is there anything else going on that evening? Anybody say? Quilting that afternoon. Say what now? Quilting that afternoon. Oh, quilting that afternoon. Okay. And I believe the church office is closed tomorrow. Carol. Uh, I just wanted to say I created some confusion to church council members. Uh, it's scheduled, it was scheduled for tonight, and I, it got changed to the 25th. So no church council tonight. It would take me forever to explain unless I that. So, thank you. Okay. Next week, the 18th, is Native American Ministry Sundays. And it said details are in the bulletins. And then April the 25th, I heard something about church council will meet that night at 6. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. We will. It's official because it's on the calendar. <laughs> and then also, we'd like to recognize our 21 Ugandan our 2021 graduates that day. And if you have a family member graduating from high school or a higher level, please have the information in the office by noon. And see the bulletin or April newsletter for the details. The cons are still on sale in the hall at $5 a bag. And Junior High UNYF is collecting coffee mugs. They have a project coming up. And uh, the kids' coins buckets are scattered around. And uh, the offering this month is for Lakeside. So, anything else? Okay, please rise for the call to worship. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water. And all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a posture, and my tongue cleaves to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. Indeed, dogs surround me. A company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. And for my raiment they cast lots. Our opening hymn is found in our hymn book on page 322, Up from the Grave He Arose. Thank you. 
Okay. Check the thermostat back here, which please? Pull it down. I just did it. Okay. It's hot. Yeah. I did. I redid it. Okay. bunnies or eggs. What? Easter. Easter. What is Easter? When Jesus arose from the dead. We just sang that song, didn't we? Up from the grave he arose. How many people saw that? When they put him in the grave and they rolled a great big rock in front of the doorway. And then the next day, the women went to the grave and they were going to take care of the body because they didn't have time. You know, before it was going to be Passover and they had to, they had to leave him alone. So they were going to come back and do it later and finish up. And what happened when they got, they thought, how are we going to get in? They've got that great big rock there, right? What happened? The ground moved it. They had an earthquake and it moved it. So the women that went to take care of his body saw Jesus. They thought he was a gardener. And then some of the disciples, the people that had been going around with him, they went, the women went and told him. And then they ran back and they looked in the grave. The, the one that got there first didn't even look in first. He just couldn't. He got there first. He ran the fastest. But then he looked inside, and what was in there? Nothing. Nothing. An empty grave. Isn't that cool? They wanted to know where they took him. So then, later on, all the disciples were together except for one. His name was Thomas. And they saw Jesus. They had locked, locked themselves inside this door because they thought they were in trouble. They thought that they were going to be after them. Then Jesus appeared to them. And they saw the nail holes in his hand. They saw where they pierced his side. And then he told them, go and tell others. Then they told Thomas. Thomas wasn't there. And he said, I'm not going to believe. Not until I can put my hand in those holes and put my hand in his side. I'm not going to believe. How do you convince somebody to believe? Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to convince somebody. It has to be a working of the Holy Spirit in their heart. That's when they believe. So a few days later, um, all the disciples were there, including Thomas. And Jesus appeared. The door was locked, but Jesus just appeared in the midst of them. And he said, here I am. And he said, oh, Lord, Master, I am so, you, I am, I'm just so thrilled that you're alive. Because he had a body. He had a body. He said, here, touch the, the hole in my hand. 
put your hand in my side. He was alive. He said, blessed are you that believe because you have seen. But even more blessed are those that believe and have not seen. So let's thank God that we believe. It's a gift. Better than finding chocolate in an egg. Right? Yeah. Sometimes chocolate melts. Mm-hmm. Gets on your hands. Yeah. <laughs> he looked at his hands. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who helps us believe even though we cannot see. We praise God for the gift of Jesus and look forward to the day when he returns. Amen. Very good. Talk to you next week. on page 328 show the presence of the Lord and we'll sing it through twice <coughs> to talk to you you know you are the creator of the heavens and the earth everything in the universe was made by you and yet you take time to listen to each one of us even though we are we are basically nothing but you're we're special to you each one of us is special to you no matter no matter what no matter what we're like we we have been perfectly made by you and, and we are special to you we thank you so much, Father. We can't we can't really express how much 
appreciation we have for you, how, how grateful, how thankful we are for you, Father. And Father, we're, we're, we're really concerned about our country, that you know, things are really messed up and it doesn't seem to be getting any better. In fact, it seems to be getting worse. And we just pray that, that you will straighten things out. I mean, we know that you're in control of everything. We know that, that, that you're on your throne and that you have our best interests in mind and that in the end, everything will work out. But, but sometimes we're just worried, Father, and we just need some, some reassurance. We also pray for a great awakening that might happen in our country that, you know, that we would turn back toward you and, and quit doing all these secular things and, and ignoring you. And, you know, that's, that's what we need. That we, we can't by ourselves change our country, but we know that you can, Father. And so we just pray that, that you would come and, and hurry and do that. And Father, we pray for all those people that are hurting. I mean, there are so many people that are in pain, and it may be it may be because of spiritual things or physical things, emotional things. And we pray for them that, that you give them strength and courage and comfort, but 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 strength to deal with their problems, Lord. And we also pray for our pastors, Pastor Wes and Pastor Elizabeth, and. You know, being a pastor is a really difficult job, and and we we pray not only for them but for all pastors and, and all people that try to bring others to you, Father. We pray for them and, and and hope that that they have the guidance and that they have the tools and the things that they need to to accomplish their jobs. Now, please join with me in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise for this morning's scripture. The scripture this morning is from John 20, 19 through 29. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his sight. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they aren't forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and on my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my sight. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet come to believe. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May I be seated? <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> well,
Well, Easter is over. I hope you all had a great Easter. We did. And it's something that we always look forward to each year. But, you know, we have such great music. We have beautiful flowers. We have family members that come to visit. And the church is completely full. We have new people coming that we haven't seen for a long time. And, and of course, the beautiful scripture, all these things that we think about with Easter is just. And of course, the most important is Christ is risen. He's overcome death. But what are we going to do now? All this is over. It's like we've seen like what what we want things to be like. You know, like, they, wouldn't it be great if every time we came to church, there were all these people and new people to meet and, and you know, great music and flowers, which we all, which we pretty much always have anyway. But, but, you know, there are so many things about Easter that just fill us, you know, it fills our, our hearts. And we would like it if, if every Sunday was like Easter. And, you know, holding Christ dying for us and living for us, fresh in our hearts and minds, that's, that's a kind of a stressful thing to do, maybe. And, but at this time, we're a little, bit, a little bit anxious, maybe a little bit fearful. Like, are we going to go back the way we were before Easter? I mean, you know, we had this great time throughout Lent where we... You know, we, maybe, maybe we did a special devotion or maybe, maybe we did something each day to remind us about Jesus, you know, that made us closer that we don't normally do. Are we going to forget all about that? And are we just going to go back to the way that we were? Well, you know, we're, some of us are tired and we, we're, you know, maybe we want to give up on these devotions, these extra devotions and things that we did. All these preparations that we had for Easter. And maybe we're a little bit scared because it is stressful to think about Jesus on the cross. <clears throat> and we're not really sure if we have the, the strength to continue in the new ways that we had, that we promised ourselves that we were going to be like, that we were going to do this every day, that we were going to carry over what we started during Lent throughout the rest of our lives. But for some reason, you know, we're... We don't really know if we're going to be able to do it because we know ourselves too well, too well. We know that we're lazy and that we are afraid to go outside of our comfort zone. Even though being outside of our comfort zone is where we, where we most often meet God. We don't meet God sitting at home in our easy chair. We meet him when we go out, when we, go, when we encounter other things and and where life gets difficult, that's usually the time that we meet him. And this is where we meet the disciples today in the scripture. And they are way outside of their comfort zone. You know, they've been through Holy Week and it's really been a tough week on them. And we find them locked in a room for fear of the Jews. Their leader's been killed and they think that they might be next. And no one really seems to know what happened. You know, it's just, it's just chaos in that room. If you can imagine what it's like, chaos and fear. Mary Magdalene has come and told them that she has seen Jesus and he's not dead. But this contradicts what they have seen with their own eyes. If they saw Jesus, he died. I mean, can you imagine the discussion going on in that room? Maybe they prayed, I don't know, but it doesn't say anything about that in the Bible. <clears throat> but in the midst of all this turmoil, suddenly Jesus appears. Actually, this is not a comforting sight. You know, any time that you meet with God, it's scary. First of all, how did he get in there? The doors were locked. <clears throat> Actually... The way that Jesus got in there is the way, is the story of the Bible. Jesus always tries to get in where we are. He, throughout history, God has tried to, to communicate with men. And, you know, he, it doesn't matter how many doors are locked between us and Jesus, he still tries to come in. In the, 
the stained glass window up there. He's knocking on the door, but it's up to us to open it. <clears throat> he always comes after us. And it doesn't do us any good to run away. I mean, Jonah tried that. He, he, he didn't like what God told him, so he decided he was going to run away to another town, and he ended up in the belly of a fish. So that didn't really work out too good for him. <clears throat> but anyway, Luke tells us that, that the disciples thought that Jesus was a ghost. I mean, how else would he get in there? The doors are locked. <clears throat> And some of the disciples may have thought that Jesus came to rebuke them for their behavior the week before because they were not, they were not upstanding disciples. They did not do what they had promised to do. They betrayed Jesus. They ignored him. They ran away from him. And, and you know, they just were not what they were supposed to be. <clears throat> well, anyway, Jesus comes and he says, Peace be with you. So that, that reassures them. And they relax a little bit. But then he says, I am sending you just as the Father sent me. So just as they were feeling a little bit better, he, could, he gives them a new responsibility. Now how are they going to do this? And they have more anxiety. And then Jesus breathes on them. And it's kind of like God breathing on, on a, a, breathing on Adam in Genesis. It says in Genesis that God breathed the breath of life into Adam, and he became a living being. Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit on the disciples, and they received a new life. <clears throat> And from then on, the Holy Spirit lives in them and in all believers, and that's us. So did the disciples know at the time what this meant? Well, probably not. I mean, did the disciples ever understand anything? I mean, they were always getting things wrong. They were always forgetting what they were supposed to be doing. They didn't understand what Jesus said. So they probably didn't really understand what was going on. But this Sunday is usually reserved to talk about Doubting Thomas, who would not believe you know, what anyone else said. He had to see it for himself. But in spite of his disbelief, Jesus had compassion on him. Jesus didn't get upset with Thomas. He, he led him slowly through all the things, you know, showed him all of his wounds and all that sort of thing and let him put his fingers inside. So to me, to me that meant that, that doubting is okay, that Jesus thought it was all right. He didn't, he didn't get upset about it. He just you know, calmly led him through all this sort of, all the things. And then in the end, Thomas confessed, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So Thomas gets all the notoriety for, for doubting. But were the other disciples any better? No, they all doubted. Are we any better? No, we all have doubts. And now may be one of the times that we have some doubts. We may doubt that we can sustain this great feeling of faith that we had last Sunday, you know, throughout the year. <clears throat> Jesus knew that the disciples were incapable of carrying out their mission of spreading the word. In spite of all that they had seen, they had been with Jesus for three years. They had witnessed all the miracles, all the wonderful things that he had done. And they still had trouble believing and following him. So what does he do? He gives them the Holy Spirit to teach them, to support them, to strengthen them, to lead them. This really is the most important part of today's scripture. It's not that Thomas doubted. It's, it's that God had a plan to deal with the doubt. And that was the Holy Spirit. And the good news is, we as believers also have the Holy Spirit. And Jesus knows that we cannot do our mission alone. 
So he gave us the Holy Spirit. And what is exactly our mission? To love God and to love neighbors, to share the gospel, to share our faith with others, and to make every Sunday like Easter. To be, as Pastor Wes is always saying, an everyday Christian. So the same spirit that was in the burning bush that that saved Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego from the fiery furnace, that, that rescued David from the, I mean Daniel from the lions, that, re, that raised Christ from the dead and went with the apostles on all their missionary journeys. That spirit is in us. And Christ knew that we could not do our faith by ourselves, nor does he expect us to. We cannot sanctify ourselves. We cannot convert other peoples to Christianity, but the Holy Spirit can. And God gave us the Holy Spirit just like he gave it to the disciples. They couldn't fulfill their mission without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit enabled them to continue to be effective ministers, even though they were perfect believers. And, you know, we can do that too. We have a lot more powers and a lot more abilities than we realize. But we cannot see God. We cannot put our fingers into Jesus' side. But we are blessed to believe anyway. We have the Holy Spirit to shepherd us. We can make every Sunday like Easter. We can share our faith with others. We can be everyday Christians. All we have to do is get in touch with the Holy Spirit that lives in us. So pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to be revealed to you. Amen. Now, please pray with me. Heavenly Father, help us to be a more spiritual people. We have supernatural abilities that we don't realize and that we don't utilize. Help us, Father, to see and to use these gifts for your glory. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand as you can and we'll uh, sing the doxology.
these songs that we sing all the time were written by people that had really good insight into our faith. And today we are singing about Jesus will go with me all the way and I will follow where he leads me. So let us go. And, it, and we just said, I'll go with him all the way. So let us go and make this part of our lives. <laughs>